Uh, this is called The People You Try Not to Look At. I awoke with the terror today. Usually it comes and goes with the night, but this morning it lingered in the unmade bed, in the dirty dishes in the bathroom mirror. And through the day it dogged me, blooming into the corners of everything. I saw it in the man on the bus and on the woman in the grocery store. And I wondered if they saw it in me. Some people you see how the terror has taken hold of them, and it will be all they know for the rest of their days. These are the people you try not to look at. Most everyone knows the terror more than they will say. At some point, we made a collective decision not to speak of it, except in books and poems and other things we cast aside. The young know the terror only through stories and the faces of the old. They don't yet believe. The rest of us go about our business as best we can. We lose ourselves in crowds and pray it will not find us. We say, let it take the others. Let someone find a way to save us. This is called The Dead and the Living Alike. Last night they found a woman stuffed in a suitcase, drifting in the San Francisco Bay. I read the news and I ponder the underlying terror of life, how it comes crashing like a wave, pouring through the cracks of our pretty dreams when we least expect. And I understand that this is how it ends up for all of us, more or less. I understand that I too am a woman, stuffed in a suitcase and thrown to indifferent waters. Maybe it hasn't happened yet, or maybe I don't remember, but the fact of it is there. And I guess that's why we have God and television and narcotics and drink. In some days I am frightened of the dead and the living alike. The enormity of the sky and the purity of its blue strikes a fear in me as I walk beneath it, weeping for things I don't understand. This is called Paris in the Spring. I get Paris in the Spring. Today we'll drink wine in the sunlight and pretend the gods have some love to spare for us. You hold your glass just so, dreaming of 1935 and Paris in the Spring. But all we've got is Polk Street and a plastic table that wobbles and the stillborn century that feels like an afterthought of a story long done. Yet still we dream that all the bodies and all the graves will bloom into love letters never burned and that the gaping wound of existence will pour forth desperate joy instead of blood. We'll forgive all the pretty things that never loved us and will love them all the more, and strive to be beautiful despite the indifference of the day, if only because no one else is trying. And this is one last one, it's called A Few More Hours of Sunlight. We drink beer in your kitchen, and we talk of the lives of dead poets, while outside the window was the September sun, and beneath it, the city streets and the people who carry their lives like corpses on their backs. They wait for buses and taxis. They wait for their tiny phones to ring. They wait for all the lights to finally turn green, as if they truly believed things had some interest in being done. Ambition is for the ambitious, and let's leave them to it. If history is to be believed, we'll all end up badly one day. And what of it? We have another bottle in the fridge and a few more hours of sunlight. Thanks.